Hello, let's process some data, shall we? All right, so this is going to be a tutorial to kind of go over how to do some common calculations in Excel, how you should generally kind of set up Excel to do your data processing in a lab and then make a results table um, and, you know, paste it into a logger pro graph. Uh, okay, because Excel is the thing to do. Uh, using a calculator is slow and silly and will waste a lot of time. If you get good at Excel, it's going to save you so much time in doing all of your work and keeping track of what you're doing. And it will even, if you make a mistake and you go back and change it, Excel will fix everything for you. You don't have to recalculate. It's great. Okay. So this is an example experiment where we measured the time it takes for a pendulum to swing back and forth 10 times. We had different length pendulums. And in this experiment, which I would want to be keeping in mind, uh, we would be looking at something like the relationship between the period of a pendulum and its length. Okay, and I just put that here for context because we're going to find the period, which is just defined as the time it takes a pendulum to swing back and forth one time. So we're going to do some real simple math and look at how we do that. All right. In general Excel, you want to uh, kind of use column format. will make life easier for the calculations and will make life easy once we start making a results graph. So I know I'm going to need length and I'm going to need period. So first thing, let's uh, do a simple one. I want to like uh, have my lengths in meters. So I know I'm going to do a unit conversion. So say you measure masses in grams, you measure length in centimeters, something like that. If I just want to convert, it's super easy, but uh, I should officially make a, make a cell to do it. So let's just say length meters. So I know what I'm looking at. I'm going to slide that back down. So I'm going to get my lengths in meters, and I mean, I think we know how to do this. Centi means 100, so I'm going to take that number and divide by 100. So what I'm doing here to do a, f a formula in Excel, the code for telling Excel to write a formula, let me make this a little bigger, is to do the equal sign. So equal sign tells Excel, hey, here comes a formula. I'm going to tell you to do some math. You can do, you know, any kind of math you want in Excel. And, you know, type it in like a calculator, it'll do it for you. But the thing I really want to do is use my cells. So I want to say, take the thing here and divide it by 100 to give me meters. So I'm going to click the cell. Yeah, and now it's picking what's in cell A4. And I'm going to do slash to divide by 100. That looks right to me. That's how many meters 10 centimeters is. And then I'm going to copy paste it down uh, because Excel's smart. It'll just do that formula. If you do it vertically, it's like smart. It'll do the formula that way. So little trick, if you go down to the bottom right-hand corner of the cell that has your formula and you hover over it, like right where that little green box is, if you can see it, it turns into like a black crosshair, your cursor does, and then you can click and drag down, and where you drag, it will copy the formula. So if I click, I can see it's smart enough that it knows, okay, you want me to take, you know, the thing in A and divide it by 100. And here, it'll take that thing in A and divide it by 100, right? So it'll match up. So working kind of, you know, vertically like that, I guess, is, is the move. There's my lengths in meters, easy. Um, I will want to think about uncertainty for those, which maybe we can do um, in a second when we make our official results table. For now, I just got the numbers. Okay, um, let us also, we're definitely going to want the average time. Yeah, because I'm going to do, to find this period, I got to know the time it takes for it to go back and forth 10 times, so I'm going to average that first. All right, average is easy, equal sign, and I'm going to type the word average, open a parentheses, and that's the function in Excel to do an average, or the formula. All right, so equal average parentheses you usually need for these uh, functions, and then that's like your input of the function, right? My input is those five numbers. All right, I'm clicking and dragging to highlight the five cells that I want to average together. That's like the uh, syntax, you know, the code Excel is going to say to say V4 through F4. That's what I want. I'll close the parentheses officially and press enter. And would you look at that? It averaged the numbers together. And I got 6.58. Right. I'm going to copy that formula down. Again, going to the bottom right, clicking and dragging when I get the little black crosshair cursor. And look at that. Average all those numbers together. I didn't have to touch my calculator and spend however long, you know, typing 25 different numbers into a calculator to get five different averages. And, uh, you know, that's like an easy one. Imagine when we do some more involved multi-step things. Excel will do it all for you. It's so great. All right. Um, all right. This is just a little annoying. Excel will do this sometimes. It's saying it gives me a little error. 
and it says formula emits adjacent cells. That's Excel helpfully saying, hey, there was a number over here too. Did you mean to include that in your average? You only highlighted these. Well, Excel's smart, but you know, only so smart. Uh, the human being needs to add some context and be like, no, 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 that's okay. That's what I wanted to do. So I'm just going to turn these off. I'm going to say ignore error because that's annoying to me. They won't show up if you put it in a Word doc. Okay, there's my average time. I also need uncertainty because we got to propagate error. So using Excel to propagate error is one of the great things Excel will do. Um, okay, so I'm going to use, to keep track of what I'm doing, I'm going to use the delta symbol. So for the way we say uncertainty, so I'm going to go insert symbol. I'm going to find the delta. Oh, let's see if I can do it quick. If I go here to Greek, and there it is, delta. And I press insert. And then now I got my delta, so I can say delta t average. That's my average, sorry, my uncertainty in the average time. All right, remember the formula for the uncertainty of an average. You'll do this in almost every lab. We do max minus min over two. So highest value of these five minus the smallest value of these five, in other words, the range, and you cut that in half. Excel will, again, do all that for you. Um, I know there's going to be a big fraction with like max minus min on top, so I'm going to start with some parentheses. Because I'm going to do, um, if we can kind of picture this, max minus min over 2. So let's do max minus min. Excel's got functions for max. So I type max, and it even tells you, look, what it does. Returns the largest value. It's going off the screen, I think, but in a set of values. All right, so max, open parentheses, highlight the numbers I want. It's going to take the biggest number there. Close the parentheses, then minus min. Open the parentheses, highlight the same five numbers. Close that parentheses. Close this parentheses. So now I got, you know, this whole thing. These parentheses are saying all this stuff divided by 2. So I'm just watching my order of operations there just like I would in the calculator. Max minus min over 2. And press Enter. And there you go. There's my uncertainty, the average time. And copy it down. Look at this. Click this little guy. Click and drag down. And you copy that formula. And incredible. Now it'll take the maximum of those five values minus the minimum of those five values divided by 2 and so on and so on. And Excel just did all that uncertainty work for me. Uh, again, I don't care about the adjacent cells for the same reason. Incredible, I got my average time. I got the uncertainty in my average time. Um, all different uncertainties, which would be fun to deal with. Okay, then because of the RQ, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna graph. And for this, I would make a graph of period versus length. Okay, so again, the here's the definition of period. It's easy, it's time for one swing of a pendulum. This is the average time for 10 swings. So I guess what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide by 10. All right, the symbol, the variable we use for period when we get there and learn about pendulums and fun stuff like that is capital T is usually what we use for a period. So for now, because this is just like my kind of scratch work, all this stuff, I'm just putting enough detail that I know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to call that capital T, like that's the period. And I think all I need to do is take the average time and divide it by 10. Uh, fun to think about, why would a student very smartly decide to measure 10 swings of a pendulum rather than just measuring one? I would say this makes the uncertainty way better, but think about why. Okay, take that average time, divide it by 10. I did equal sign, click the cell, slash 10 to divide it by 10, and that looks good to me. That's one tenth of that number, right? Copy it down, boom, there's all my periods, so easy. All right, and I think I do because I'm going to want this in my results table. Um, and this is going to be an example of a results table. We have three columns because I'm going to need one for uncertainty. I need the uncertainty in my period. All right, I'm a lazy guy, so I just, oops, I did it wrong, but I just copy pasted that delta. So I can say delta t for the uncertainty of the period, which is different officially because I took this and divided by 10. 10 is a perfect, you know, constant number. 10 has no uncertainty. It's the math number 10. So two ways to think of this. One way is I did a division problem, and the 10 has no uncertainty. So the percentage uncertainty in my answer should be the same as the per percentage uncertainty here, or oops, fractional uncertainty here. Um, or in other words, I divided by a constant. So since I made this number 10 times smaller, my uncertainty also gets 10 times smaller. And that's going to keep it like the same fraction of the value. If that uh, makes any sense. All right, so I'm taking this uncertainty and dividing it by 10 to match the value. So 
time had this much uncertainty, period should have this much uncertainty. They're both just 10 smaller. That's all I'm doing to get period. Copy the formula down. Bam, bam, bam. All right, I got values for period. I got values for the uncertainty of the period. Now I'm good to go, and I'm good to make a results table with all this work because I got the stuff that's going to go in it, which is going to be, uh, you know, this guy and this guy because I'll need the uncertainty. They're all different, so that's what I want to show you how to do. And also this guy, the length. All right, this is kind of in-between work then, you know. I think the thing to do is I just want to make one kind of clean table over here. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Um, all right, so I want to make another table. This is going to go in my document. So the way I'll present this lab would be I would say, here's this data table. Here's the data. Talk about the data a little bit. Show some uh, simple sample calculations for, I guess, divided by 10. I wouldn't show a sample for an average. You don't have to bother doing that. Or a unit conversion. But uh, anyway, I, I talk through my process, and I then show the results table. Here's what I got. Here's how I process this data. So this would be table two then, because it's going to be the second table that appears in the report. So table two. Um, OK, and so it's going to be pretty similar, but I just want to describe what's going to be in the table, which is going to be the length here and this period thing. So I want to, instead of saying time taken, I would say, let's, like, let's say the average period of or periods, because there's multiple, right? Average periods um, of pendulums of varying lengths. I think that's all I really need to say. It's pretty clear. It's a pretty simple experiment. I'm covering the two things in my table, which are period and length. And I'm describing that as the period of a pendulum and, a, and a, the length of the pendulums. All right. There's that. And then let's. Uh, all right, let's do some of this. So now I want to just make this a little official. So length, again, this is where I'm going to need an uncertainty. So let me steal this. I'm just going to copy paste because, again, I'm lazy. And, uh, you know, do as little work as you need to to get the to get, to get what you need. All right, so but now I don't want centimeters. I'm, I'm making this meters. Same deal, a unit conversion. I just divided these numbers by 100. The uncertainty should also just get divided by 100. So ready, here I go. I divided by 100, right? Add two zeros. It looks like that. Um, all right, I could just copy paste these numbers. Another little thing you can do if you want a little silly trick, I could do equal sign, click that cell, and it's just, just gonna return the number in that cell and just bring it over here. And then I can mess with the formatting of these however I want. All right, but I get those numbers over here. Uh, I'm going to have to clean this up and make it look nice. Um, and then let me just make it real wide for now. And then I want period. And this would be measured in seconds. It's, the, again, the time it takes for one swing. So that's the symbol I use, but that's period. And same deal. I'm going to go equal, click that cell. And it's just going to pull that number over here. For a nice clean table that I can make and not worry about messing up my work over here. And then same thing here, and I'm actually going to call this delta t. So I'm just going to copy paste that. I am going to add units because now it's like official. Um, I'm going to get rid of this little highlight. All right, so when I'm doing an uncertainty like this, this is a good enough way to communicate it. Um, it's understood, and you'll be talking about this in the report too, that capital T is the symbol for period. So this is pretty clear that this is the period in seconds, and then the uncertainty goes here. Because if you have different uncertainties like we do here, I can't put like a plus minus up here, right? Because it's not plus minus the same thing for all these numbers. So I'm going to take all those numbers. Again, let's do equal sign. Click here. It's going to just pull that number. And I'm going to click drag it down. All right, so I got all those same numbers. But now it's like, you know, 0.658 plus or minus 0.02, blah, blah, blah. 0.942 plus or minus blah, blah, blah. Now I really just need to watch my rounding rules. This first one, let's watch this. One, two, three, I should be in the fourth decimal place. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. The middle one, I'm not. So I'm gonna click this increase decimal button to make sure I show that zero at the end so my precision matches for every single number. And then here, I gotta follow my rounding rules. So the rule is every uncertainty gets rounded to one sig fig. That's one sig fig. I gotta make these one sig fig. So I'm gonna mess with the decimal until, there we go, one sig fig. Okay, this is nice because it's all like in the hundredth place just for argument. Let's say, let's just say I ended up, I'm going to change this 
just to illustrate it. Let's say this was like 0.2. Um, well, then I would run around this to 0.2, and that means this value is going to be a little different. All right, so these values then, I round to the place value where the uncertainty is. So for most of these, it's the second decimal place. There's no rule about the sig figs of this number. The only rule is that there's one sig fig in these numbers, and then these numbers have to, you know, basically have the same number of decimal places or stop at the place where the uncertainty is if it's not like a decimal. So this one's good, 60, 0 0.66, 0 0.03, 0 0.94, 0 0.04, 1.15, 0 0.05. This one, though, and again, because I just made it up to make this point, 1.32 plus or minus 0.2 is no good. I got no business talking about the hundredths place if my uncertainty is in the tenths place, so I'm going to round that off. I make that 1.3, 0.2. Now my precision is perfect everywhere. I got a nice descriptive title. Um, I think I'm just going to do this. So I'm going to take all this. I'm going to merge and center. I'm going to wrap text. I'm going to bold this title. I think that's looking pretty good to me. I'm going to add some grid lines. That's a nice little results table. All right, so I got a results table here with uh, I converted all my lengths to, whoops, I missed one thing. That's meters. Uh, yeah, so that's meters now. Um, I did some little calculations here to find my period. And then I my method of doing this is usually like this. Do a bunch of math work in the middle. Treat this as like digital scratch paper. And then you can kind of clean it up and make a nice little results table here. And this is what I would put in the... Uh, document this stuff any relevant stuff here that's not communicated in the results table I would communicate with writing I would say I took the average time and then I divided by 10 and that's how I got these numbers and here they are that's what the report basically does all right and then you'll graph these values so uh, I think we'll do one more where we'll look at how to put things on a graph when they have different um, sized uncertainties which is easy enough to do in Liger Pro all right and our data adventures continue